afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ro. I am here in front of the Fashion for Good Museum in Amsterdam. Uh, and today we're going to launch a brand new theme in our museum. It's called A Cut Above. I'm going to show you what the window looks like before we start. Here we go. So the next six months, uh, we will have a new theme in the museum. And what we're doing today is that we're doing a, a super a unique experience because normally we do this physically in the museum. So this is the first time ever we're doing a digital launch of our theme and we're super excited to have you all here. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the order of what we're doing today. So I am your raging reporter for today. I will walk around the museum and show you anything you wanna see. Um, then Gwen, our experience manager, will introduce the theme and explain what we're doing today and which brands are featured in our theme. Each of the themes, uh, each of the brands will explain who they are and what their brand is. And then you can leave questions in the Q&A. So anything you wanna know from the brands that are featured in our museum, you can ask them anything you want, as long as you leave a question in the Q&A and we can answer them for you uh, right after their uh, presentation. But before we start uh, with the introduction of the theme and uh, all of the brands, I would like to do a poll because I would love to know who's listening in today. So. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Are you a student? Are you a designer? Are you working for a manufacturer? Cost your vote. <laughs> and then in a little bit, uh, we, can, we can just figure out who we're actually talking to. It's always good for us to know who you are and where you're from. You can just press whatever theme, whatever background it is that you're from. And then in a little bit, uh, we can let you know uh, the results of the poll. So once again, for the ones that are um, actually joining today, uh, my name is Ro, I'm your raging reporter. I'm live here from Amsterdam, uh, from the Fashion for Good Museum. And we are about to launch a cut above a new theme in our museum, featuring six pioneering brands doing things differently. And you can ask uh, all of the brands questions right after their presentation. The poll is still going on, so cast your votes. In a little bit, we'll be able to tell who's from where. We can um, wait for a little bit. Ah, here we go. 23% is a student. There are a few designers working for a brand, working for a manufacturer, innovator, consultant, even some press, and just people that are interested in the topic. Well, that's great. I think that's, <laughs> that's very much needed for today. Um, so thanks for tuning in everyone, uh, live from the Fashion for Good Museum in Amsterdam. I'm gonna give the mic to uh, Gwen, our experience manager, who will explain our brand new theme um, to you. So over to you, Gwen. Thank you, Ro, for the introduction. Uh, as Ro said, I'm, I'm Gwen, I'm the experience manager here at Fashion for Good. I'm, I'm located in the good shop, uh, really nice background. And together with my uh, team, we search for Amazing brands, we come up with themes and we welcome visitors in our museum, both digitally and physically here in Amsterdam. And that means if you've never uh, been to the museum before and you do not live in the Netherlands, as of next week, you're actually able to book a tour digitally into our museum. Uh, so you can experience the brands and learn about our museum ex um, innovation pieces you can ask questions and learn about the future of fashion but first i would like to tell you a little bit more about our new theme a cut above fashion done differently uh, this theme will be will be leading for the next six months for the events that we feature in the good shop our events uh, and programming and also workshops the idea from for this theme actually arose in our own space here at fashion for good we uh, showcase the journey of a t-shirt because if you really want to understand sustainability you need to know about what how a clothing piece is made so there are different steps involved in the making of a t-shirt for example and it all starts uh, with step one making a design and it's the very first step because 80 percent of the impact of a garment arises from the decisions made by designers so over the next six months, you can discover uh, labels that work as creative as possible in order to be as sustainable as possible. So rediscover how our clothes 
are designed, made and worn. Think 3D printing, body scan, modular fashion and even full on digital outfits. So I'm super excited to introduce to you six innovative brands and innovations that we've selected for this theme. Wires, M-Rose, Unspun, Flavia La Roca, Sense Common and The Fabricants. And today we have five of the six brands live here with us today on the line to show and share more about the design processes. The six brands, M-Rose, can unfortunately not join this call due to uh, a huge time difference as she's based in New Zealand, but uh, we'll be adding uh, the presentation into the video recorder, recording, recorder, <laughs> recording that we will share with you after this live session. So watch it later again if you like. And I'm also excited that along with that video recording, uh, we will send you a digital goodie, goodie bag and uh, a zero waste pattern from M Rose will be added for you to uh, go and get creative yourself. And as Ro also said, but maybe a good reminder after each presentation, there's time to ask questions. So during the presentation, you can drop your question in the Q&A box that's uh, either on top of your screen or uh, on the bottom. Um, and if we cannot get to your question, don't worry. Uh, we host monthly uh, Ask Me Anything sessions with the brands uh, on our Instagram so stories. Just keep an eye on our socials and uh, we'll make sure that your questions are answered. Uh, and now it's time to start with the first, first one up which is Lily Cole from Wires, dialing in from London. Lily, are you ready? Oh, yeah, I am. Hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. Yeah, I come from um, actually just outside London. Um, and I'm speaking on behalf of this brand, Wires Glasses, that I set up with my friend Yaya, who you can see in this picture a few years ago. Yayo's a very talented designer and he was on holiday one time and his glasses broke and he took the two lenses that had fallen out and a piece of wire and he twisted the wire around to hold the lenses together um, so that he'd have glasses the rest of his holiday and when he came back um, to London he was like oh that's kind of a cool concept and idea and started to, to manufacture glasses with a single piece of wire. We made the first collection in Zimbabwe in Africa because of the African wirecraft tradition um, and then we found that they were beautiful, but not entirely functional because you couldn't fold them. And so Yayo designed a hidden invisible hinge, which is in the corner of the wire, um, which allows it to fold without all the kind of screws that you normally get with glasses. We've always been trying to focus on minimizing waste in production. And so we 3D print the rims um, that hold the lenses in place. Um, you may or may not know that there's a huge amount of plastic waste in fashion generally, and of course in eyewear. Um, most eyewear is cut out of acetate frames, which produces 65 to 70% plastic waste. Um, whereas 3D printing is a, is a zero waste technology because you only print what you need. Um, and our really exciting development is that the new collection, which we launched yesterday, um, we're using bioplastic that was a biomaterial that's derived from the castor bean um, plant, both for the rims, the 3D printed part, and also for the lenses. So all of the sunglass lenses you're seeing the new collection and the slides now um, a range of different beautiful colors are all kind of amazingly made with um with a castor beam derivative um, the other concept with wires is that it's modular and so our thinking is that once you buy a wire you're kind of making an investment in the wire for life and as we develop new alternative shapes and styles of rims you can switch out your rims or if it gets scratched for example um, to replace them onto the wire at a lower cost and of course with a lot less materials. Um, so the screens you've been seeing so far are our new collection which just launched yesterday, um, sunglasses and optical and then following on after that I'm going to show you a manufacturing video of how we've made this new collection. It's being handcrafted in Italy. The rims are 3D printed in England um, and then it's assembled together in Italy. I think it's about, let's see, the, I'm not used to this format. <laughs> oh yeah, masks, that's where I was gonna go. So at the beginning of the COVID crisis, um, firstly our production has been delayed for three months, but also we kind of had this idea of thinking about how we could be helpful and contribute and wondered if it was possible to design a mask that would hang from glasses frames as opposed to from your ears. 
And so we've designed these masks, which literally hang off the glasses frame rather than having elastics behind your ears. And we've specifically designed the holes of the masks uh, wider than we need them to be so that people can use the masks on other pairs of glasses that they might already own. Um, and we've been hand making these so far in the UK. Um, they were trying to scale up the demand now because it's been very high. And the last one you saw is um, using offcuts from the design of Simone Rocha and then all of the proceeds go to Women's Aid, which is the charity she chose. And we're working with a few other designers. We'll release new patterns in the next few weeks using their offcuts. So again, a no waste process um, and we're supporting charities through those initiatives. So this video is showing you how we manufacture. Well, this is how, this is how, not how we manufacture, this is how other glasses are often manufactured, um, which is where you have a kind of detractive process of cutting out the shape from acetate. And then instead we focused on 3D printing, as you'll see. I mean, normally there'd be music with this video instead you have to listen to me <laughs> I should just sing <laughs> so this is in northern Italy where there's a big manufacturing um, basis the 3d printing is done in the UK right now um, the bioplastic comes from the castor bean plant in, um, and that's a Swiss company called Delors uh, we use stainless steel we produce it in three colors um, silver a gold finish and a black finish and then this is the invisible hinge that's mm. hidden in the corners Right now, there are five different wire shapes and then each different wire shape has multiple different types of rims and colors that you can choose that would fit onto the same wire. It's a family run business that we're working with. And um, and yeah, they hand assemble the pieces and then send them back to us so we can ship them out to customers. We've managed for the temple tips to put nearly half natural rubber. I have a background of looking at natural rubber as a way to, um, specifically I was looking at wild rubber as a way to protect forests because it's a natural product that the more you use it, the more you're paying to protect the forest because you're making a living from the forest. Um, and so we managed to bring that concept in through the rubber, rubber tips and the edges. And may maybe one day we'll be able to use wild rubber. That's part of the ambition. So yeah, thank you so much Fashion for Good. We're super excited to launch this with you and um, we look forward to hearing everyone else's presentations. Thank you, that was nice. Good, we have the full video uh, today. <laughs> um, there are some questions from the audience. Um, so let me search one. What, there is one question about, is there any plan for the end of life for the glasses? I think you have to unmute. Oh, Lily, you're, uh, you're still on mute. Yeah. I'm just looking at the questions now, sorry. I don't have, ah. the, I don't have the fold on me, sorry. I, will, um, I should have, but I don't have a, a pair of the new collection on me. Um, the, the shall, I, shall I get it? You can get it, yeah, you can show, thank you. <laughs> um, the, the name of the raw material, um, we're working with a company called Dolores. Um, I think they're a Swiss company who make the lenses and it comes from a bioplastic which is being made, well, like a, I don't know if bioplastic is the right word, or biomaterial that's made from the castor bean plant. Um, and we have, a, we have our model uh, coming in. <laughs> <laughs> On the row. And do you want to show close up how the fold works? Because I think that's what they were asking about, so the hinge. Like if you show how that works. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't really see, the point is you can't see it, right? Cause it's yeah. invisible, but it just means that it's much more functional. Yeah, and it's super light. I was really surprised by, by the lightness of it and the fits on the frame because you see it like this, but it, if, if you have it on, it's, yeah. I don't actually yeah. know if this one fits me, but it's, <laughs> it feels really <laughs> nice, yeah. Yeah, um, we don't currently have a take back system. I would love to do that at some point. We're a tiny, tiny business. And I personally believe it's like, what's that phrase? Never let perfect be the enemy of good. That every year we're trying to improve the production. Um, this year was a big step for us in terms of managing to use 100% um, biomaterials. Next, we'll look at probably the metal sourcing, next the take back system, you know, as we grow, we can start then thinking about all elements of the, of the production. 
um yep. but yeah it's uh, it's it's hard to do everything perfectly and you just for me it's just you try and fix one problem at a time and keep improving yeah okay thank you thank you for all uh for all the questions and great answers um yeah we'll, we'll speak soon Thanks thank so you much. for doing this thank you okay bye bye and the next one up is walden from unspun dialing in from hong kong are you there yep great can you hear me yes so excited i'm getting That's new fun. glasses <laughs> well, i know i am <laughs> thank <Okay>. you <laughs> okay unspun you can start if you're ready yep yeah, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Walden from Unspun. Um, Unspun is the company that will produce the next favorite pair of custom denim jeans out of a 3D body scan. Uh, we operate a completely zero infantry model um, and we are working towards a zero waste vision. Every single pair of jeans is created for you and you only. The industry currently uh, dumps about 10 to 20 percent of jeans um, that are in perfect condition, they were never worn, never sold. And we thought if we could create an on-demand model for jeans, we could you know, play a part in solving uh, that problem. And our North Star is to reduce global human carbon footprint by 1%. So flipping the industry on its head uh, in 2017, I was uh, you know, working out and I, I recognized that a lot of my friends who uh, in the fitness community, they you know, they, they cannot find trading jeans uh, anywhere else. And I thought, hmm, maybe, maybe this is the first uh, niche market that we try to serve. And so in 2017, we, I, we invited 50 of my closest friends in, in the fitness community, bought a body scanner, put everything inside a hundred square feet space um, and tried to see if, uh, if, if this would work. We were blown away by the level of support and the, the reviews from, from some of these customers. Um, and so we assembled a team of, uh, of engineers, hardware engineers, software engineers, uh, marketers, product developers to, to really take a, a crack at this problem of sizing and fit um, and the industry deep, deeply entrenched issue of inventory. When we started, it was really, really hard. It would take us literally a full 24 hour to create a pair of custom jeans and no manufacturer wanted to touch us because we're producing one at a time. And the patterns are so hard to sew because they're so curvy. Um, and we, we had a lot of trouble just to produce the jeans. Um, and so my co-founder Beth and I would really have to track down the largest place cutter in the city and uh, cut the pattern pieces so that we can make it significantly easier so that the manufacturers uh, could work with uh, us to produce custom denim jeans to start. Ever since then, we have served uh, over thousands of customers. They would come in different shapes and forms and expectations about what fit is. Um, some of them would come in and literally cry in front of us saying that the fact that they're traumatized by the sizing barrier time and, and feeling the need to, to have to fit into one of the sizing buckets. And so in 2018, we opened a first store in San Francisco, um, creating this process and experience of having uh, serving customers. And the process is quite simple. Um, we have a body scanner uh, that does a 3D body scan in under 10 seconds. And essentially after that, you can customize all aspects of the genes. Uh, you can uh, you can pick your one of the three fit styles. You can uh, pick one of the the six sustainable fabric uh, options, thread colors. On top of that, you can even adjust the waist height and hem length. And we are delivering um, on demand in three to four weeks. As part of the quality control process, we all, we've, we've also automated the process of visualizing the genes on the avatar that's generated um, to make sure that the style is consistent and to make sure that the genes that we create are accurate and um, it, it serves the, the fit um, that the customers really wanted. Um, since we've started this, we have probably diverted hundreds of genes away from landfill. Um, genes, as you, some of you might know, it's a notoriously dirty um, business. The dyeing process and the washing process is, is really environmentally damaging. And so we wanted to, to do more. 
And so last year, we began to quantify our impact. Um, we conducted, uh, conducted our first life cycle assessment and concluded that uh, on sperm genes, um, on average, save about 24% of carbon emissions compared to an otherwise industry standard pair of genes um, that's, uh, that's being surveyed. And like every business, we were highly impacted by uh, COVID-19 because previously, uh, people have to come to a physical location. Since then, uh, since six weeks ago, we actually launched mobile scanning. So effectively, all of you could be scanning from home and getting a custom pair of jeans delivered to you. On top of that, we're also working on a circular model, um, actually with uh, one of the innovators with Fashion for Good. They create uh, a thread that fuses at 220 degrees Celsius, so that at the end of the life of the genes, we could be taking back the genes and repurpose the fabric pieces that uh, we would be using for uh, second generation products. So here are some of the examples that we've created from second generation genes. We've actually repurposed the fabric pieces and created skirts and shorts out of the, the genes that we recovered from um, end of life products. And we hope to do more of that. And any sort of white thread options that are available uh, are created this way. Annika is today here with me. Um, I was given the impossible task of uh, growing a following. So you can follow us on unspun.io on Instagram. Uh, we're giving a pair of jeans to any follower before 2,100 followers. Um, and also you can scan from home. Cool, thank you, Walden. Um, I see a lot of questions popping up with how does it work? Um, so I think it would be nice because we actually have the scanning set up right here in a space. And I think Anna Ro is there. So maybe Ro, yes. you can <laughs> show a little. So we have our uh, lovely model Sophie here who actually works in the experience. I am on the lower level in our experience in Amsterdam. And this is a setup. And Sophie is actually wearing body hogging uh, leggings. She's setting up the phone and then the phone, ba the app basically explains how you need to stand. So she's, she'll stand in a specific way with her arms quite wide and then you need to rotate. And then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Walden, I'm just like explaining this as I see it. You rotate and then it's counting down and then it's measuring your body basically so you can have a body fitting, like the, the best fitting denim ever, basically. That's right. Um, and you will receive a push notification when your scan is ready. There you go. It's a short, uh, short uh, tutorial live from the museum. <laughs> Take it Thank away. Thank you so much. So, yeah, so essentially it's a 10 second uh, scanning process after which um, it, it takes about minutes to be uploading, upload, uploading the scan data um, and essentially with the same email address that you enter into the, the phone scanning uh, application, you can uh, shop on our website as if you were shopping in any e-commerce website and on the back end, uh, you don't even have to send us your, your scan data on the back end, uh, we'll be receiving all the necessary information to create your favorite pair of jeans. Cool. Um, I see some, oh, I see a lot of questions popping up, but it's good we get to that. Um, there's one other, is it viable to offer an option of genes with natural indigo rather than synthetic indigo? Yeah, so we have uh, one fabric options that's uh, actually uh, natural indigo. Um, so yeah, uh, in, in one of the fabric options, it's, it's available. Super cool. Um, I do like pants with which press my tummy a little bit flatter. Is that possible as well? <laughs> yeah, so we, especially uh, for some of our customers, waist height is uh, one of the options, one of the options that you, you when you check out, it's available. Um, typically when customers want uh, a more flattering um, sort of apps, um, they would go uh, high-waisted to, to, to be more flattering. So um, that's absolutely something that they can, they can choose and uh, optimize as well. Cool. And uh, do they find the app uh, on the website? Yes. Uh, go to unspun.io. We have a scanning se 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 section and the website, um, and it should be rather uh, straightforward. But feel free to DM us. We are pretty responsive on all the media channels, especially on Instagram. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, and for you uh, living here, uh, please feel free here uh, 
to do a scan in our museum. Uh, thank you, Walden, uh, thank for you. all these explanations and um, hope to see you soon. Thanks. Yep. We're going to uh, do the next one up, which is Flavia, Flavia La Roca. Uh, are you there with us? Yeah, I'm, we are there. Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we see two of you. <laughs> or <not> yeah. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank I'm you for joining busy. and also uh, welcome, uh, little one. Yeah. Are you ready to, uh, <laughs> to do your presentation? Sure. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So, hi everyone. First of all, I'm, I, I'm honored to be here at Fashion for Good, part of the new team. As you can see, I am an entrepreneur, I'm a designer, and yes, I'm a mom too. <laughs> uh, I started my career as a PR before. Uh, I came from Fiumicino. It's like a, it's a little city on the senior row. And then in 2007, I moved to Milan. Um, and I started my career in a different press officer or of fashion. I work for Valentino, Vivian West, to the Prada and Blue Marine. And then at one time, I, I used to have a, like very busy days. At one time I stopped it, I started thinking about the fact that we have too many clothes uh, in our wardrobe, in our luggage. Uh, I think that for have a, respon a responsible way, uh, you have to, to change the approach towards clothing. Uh, and then I started in 2013 my brand, adding the desire to, to build a sustainable, responsible uh, company. Uh, I started in 2013, as I said, but in 2017 I became mom, and so this responsibility is, was like, now it's harder for me, it's more important. Uh, so I started to design what you can see is like modular clothes. I don't design standard clothes, but I do modules. The, through the use of in the zippers can be detached and match the game to create a never ending and always renewable, always renewable wardrobe. Uh, so the idea is to have less impact on the planet, uh, save energy uh, and raw materials in the process, production process. So do you think it's possible to wear the same dress in 10 different ways? Yeah, the answer of course is yes. Three models plus two straps in a small bag can create 10 different combinations. Uh, from morning until evening, from the midi dress to a mini one, from top and skirt. So the idea is, it is really to save space when you travel, uh, to make the life cycle of the product longer. Because having models, you can, you can renew them instead of throw it away. Uh, so you save space, you travel easy, of course, you can be responsible. So, uh, of course, all the pieces are made by uh, sustainable fabrics. Uh, I use only this kind of materials, a Lexington cell, Tencel Lux, both coming from a responsible closed and loop production process that transforms pulp into cellulosic fibers of filament. They are both biodegradable, so it came from NATO, it can go back to NATO. So what I reached, I reached a new connection between the industry and the nature. Uh, in this way, we can save a lot in terms of water, energy, raw materials. And as I said, the life cycle of the product can be longer. So you, can, you, you prefer to keep them. Uh, for me, collaboration are so important. The most important one is the one with Città dell'Arte, Fondazione Pistoletto in Biella. There, I'm a co-founder of a collective online designer or work in sustainable fashion. Uh, we do a lot of projects together. So I think they also collaborate is the best way. Uh, this is a project that I did for them. Uh, Michelangelo Pistoletto called them the third paradise dresses. And it was the first time I did genderless modular pieces. Um, uh, I made them with the uh, leftover fabrics from Lanificio Fratelli Cerruti that is just in front of uh, Fondazione Città dell'Arte. Uh, this is another important dress for me that is designed in Città dell'Arte 2. Uh, you can wear it in 40 different ways. You have three modules, you have these removable flounces, uh, double face, so it, it's also made under 100% in textile looks, so it's entirely biodegradable. And it brings me 
yeah. this prize, the uh, Franca Sozzani yeah. Best Emerging Design Award yeah. at the Green Carpet Talent Competition. Yeah. Uh, having this prize for me is like a really, it's an honor, it's a push for me to go on with, the, with this path because, you know, I started when a few people were talking about sustainability. In my career, I had a lot of press coverage all around the world, but the best one is the last one. Is, uh, I got the National Geographic cover. Uh, the, the story is dedicated to the end of a trash, so the recycled hull made in Prato. Uh, I did this dress and then they, they, they wanted me on the cover too. Uh, I had also Amber Valletta wearing my clothes. Uh, for me, her, she's, she's not only a celebrity, she's a testimonial of sustainable fashion all around the world. She works all, also with, uh, you know, Stella McCartney, uh, big brands. Um, I had also Mila Jovovich, or I did a collaboration with Susie Babor. These are a few looks from the last presentation, uh, just to uh, let you understand my style, like very clean lines, timeless pieces, because also I would like to propose timeless pieces that you can hold in the wardrobe for more time and genderless ones. So uh, in this case, you have Tencel looks made look and also Candiani denim. Back at Fashion for Good, I decided to, to do a limited edition just for you. So three pieces and two straps in a bag made with three different textile. Uh, one is under percent Tencel, one is a Tencel blended with hull, and another one is Tencel looks blended with micromodal. Uh, so there will be made to order, so you can enter in the store, choose your fabric, choose your style, and then a seamstress, seamstress in, uh, in Milan, she's Valentina, she's working on these samples, uh, will do it for you. And the other step, <laughs> I think this is more, the more uh, important one, is the dyeing. So the dyeing is made in by Laura Cortinovis, she's the co-founder of Fila Color, uh, she does the dyeing uh, studio in Aosta, uh, the dye is made only with vegetable essences and local water, so without ne negative impact uh, on the environment. Um, she used these uh, uh, filler color concentrates, uh, as you can see in the video, it's like, it's, it's not just dyeing, it's like do a piece of art. So you can choose the color you prefer, choose the fabric, choose the size, and then create your like unique modular dresses. I hope you enjoy it. If you, if you were fine to, to have more information, just, uh, it's me on Instagram, it's Flavia Larocca underscore. Uh, I will answer all the questions. <laughs> sorry, as, as you can see, like I'm a multitasking, sorry for the baby, but <laughs> it's unpredictable. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Flavia. I think I first want to give you like big kudos for, for doing this all together <laughs> and continuing doing your presentation, not losing your, your story with At your the baby. End, now, so. it's, now it's nice, relaxing. Yes, maybe because you were talking, you were talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I really saw some nice questions coming up. Okay. Um, one of them, uh, can you mix and match different collections together? Yeah, sure. This is the main concept. The, the, the same size always work together. So you can buy a model now and then later in 10 years and then always work together. Yeah, sure. Super. And do you always work with zips? Any plans for other ways to separate garments with buttons? Uh, I started to work with zips because it's the best way for me to, to create modules because you can hide them and then they are you can close them really well. So buttons usually, you know, mm. maybe leave some pieces like not, not really close with a zip is the best. And then I work very close with a company in Italy uh, La, La Franchi, who does the zip and the zip are metallic one echo like uh, all certified and i have a, a precise number of you know like the little part that they make the zip so each size is like it can fit perfectly cool makes sense <laughs> um i also got some compliments uh, coming in with you doing an amazing job multitasking so uh, <laughs> you can you. Uh, put that in your pockets uh, it's if we say in the Netherlands. Um, let's do a last one. Would you ever consider partnering with a more mainstream fast fashion brand to bring this sort of multi-model styling to more people? A uh, super cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, like, I did also some meetings about it because 
uh, my, my, my dream is to have this kind of passion for everyone. So my dream is to open my own e-commerce and have like the target for, you know, for everyone, a module around 89 euros, 90 euros, something like this. But at the moment, of course, it's like, it's really difficult because I'm a small brand, but it's going to be like super also because in this way, they really can do responsible fashion. They can really start changing, not only using like organic cotton, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks. Thank yeah. <laughs> Great plans. Uh, and I, I quickly want to switch to Anna Ro, who is now has her lens on basically the backside of, uh, of where I am. But you really see your dresses coming out quite beautifully in the space. Oh, thank you. Can wow. you see, uh, Ro? Maybe you should say something. I'm not sure. Yeah, but you probably have to mute. <laughs> Here we go. So this is, uh, and maybe, I don't know if, if Flavia wants to say anything, but I think they look amazing. Uh, and here we yeah. have like a presentation in like three parts. So you can see also when you use the zipper and have the three different pieces. This purple is amazing, huh? Yeah, there are three different techniques. One is shibori, one is shade with multicolor. And there are like, you know, it's, for me in this way, there are, I, I would like really to say thank you to Laura because uh, she she done a super work on the on the dresses and also Valentina who made them. Because you know, I think that also the person you work with are really important. Because for me, otherwise it's gonna be just a sketch, it's an idea. Uh, and yeah. you can really play with them, so. Super pretty. <laughs> they fit perfectly in the store. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank wow. you. I think there's also uh, a lot of interesting, interest, uh, interesting questions about the dyes. Uh, I yeah. know she, you're, if, you're... You, if you want, you can just, uh, for, for all the people who wants to ask me something, you can write me on Instagram, of course, I will answer. I, I'm, <laughs> so I, I will be more than happy to answer about all your questions. Cool, <laughs> thanks. Thank, thank you, Flavia. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Uh, then the next one up is uh, Laura from Sense Common. Are you there? Maybe you're still on mute. Unmute. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready to go? Yeah, sure. Cool. Hi everyone, uh, I'd like to start this talk uh, by saying that I'm very proud of having uh, given my peculiar passion a chance four years ago when I quit working for established brands because I think in this uh, turbulent world only small and independent are able to act to, uh, to the changes in the, in the systems. Uh, what was that passion I followed? I am a material nerd uh, and even when I worked for the most detail-oriented of fashions, which is the haute couture, I thought nobody took ser seriously uh, the materials they were working with. We were so specific about the uh, shape of a button, but completely underestimating the powers of textiles and what they can do for us. Uh, natural or enhanced or completely man-engineered, smart fibers that are self-cleansing, thermoregulating, quick dry, etc., can really influence what we expect from our wardrobe and its lifespan. With my work, I want to showcase the positive impact that clothing can optimize clothing can have on our day-to-day -day activities. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, combining really simple natural elements to uh, make incredibly smart material materials, but why so few big brands do it? Um, obviously, it's just a bit more costly. Uh, but what would happen if we took material innovation more seriously? Uh, for one, we could expect our clothing to be lower maintenance, so longer lasting, which again saves you loads of time, money and energy. Uh, so maybe it's worth the investment after all. 
A unique example would be the Sense Common on Journey Wear, which is made out of activated charcoal fiber uh, made by a Japanese company called Uchino. The Obama oak charcoal particles in this fabric elim eliminate odor and moisture. So what doesn't uh, allow moisture to develop uh, never uh, produces smell. And self-filtering clothes like that, uh, you barely have to wash. Low maintenance is also a property of natural smart fibers like wool on the left and tensile uh, on the right in the image. High breathability of fibers results in bacteria never developing. So the sense common socks you can wear up to five days. There is enough of clothing in this, on this planet already and what you don't buy secondhand or digital really has to excuse its existence, I find. And uh, the sense common approach to responsible design is uh, by designing solutions or designing with purpose, which I take inspiration from in just analyzing how, how people live nowadays and what are the day-to-day -day habits, what are their needs. Uh, like uh, our lifestyles are much more mobile than they were before. The wardrobe has to be more versatile. And in approaching design uh, from the need perspective and adding the textile innovation to it, I believe creating a new tier of products. So maybe these products don't necessarily belong to an existing category uh, or season, of course, or gender, uh, but they do fit in any of the wardrobes. Um, one of the products uh, as example that is maybe more relevant in Scandinavia or here in the Netherlands is, uh, is the old commute overcoat, uh, which is uh, completely rain, uh, uh, completely weatherproof and also uh, sitting position adapted. Uh, and it's a comfortable coat that is at the same time completely breathable and so light that you can pack it away in a tiny bag when you don't need it. Uh, so that is a rather yeah, sophisticated form of uh, rainwear that we're not used to seeing, uh, which I believe uh, yeah, can replace a lot of disposable designs or yeah, cheap uh, umbrellas, etc. on this planet. Um, that, is, that is my approach of, of yeah, working with functional designs that are really durable. And why, why is comfort so important uh, for us? Uh, oh, sorry, I completely lost my, th my thought. <laughs> um, uh, because physical comfort is uh, something we all naturally gravitate to. It can calm us down and uh, make us feel relaxed. So one of the product lines I worked on was uh, Recover Merino Wool Body Warmers that regulate your body temperature, which means uh, if you're jumping from an air coat space to uh, outside, uh, the, the, the smart fibers in these products are able to adjust and make you feel uh, yeah, calm, relaxed and in balance, which is quite relevant when you travel a lot and, and you feel constantly tired, uh, which is what I call the modern day tiredness. Um, so uh, to deal with all other discomforts of jet lag, uh, there is also a product uh, pack called the Reset, which you see in the video now, where I also added uh, these uh, tensile socks and a, um, a skin cell renewing face mask from another brand, Madara to complete the reset experience. Um, material innovation also comes in handy, but is not always heard uh, in this uh, crisis we're living in right now, the health crisis where the disposable face masks have already uh, been detected more. There are more face masks in the Mediterranean than jellyfish at the moment. and. Uh, the uh, lifespan of that product is 450 years. So that's quite crazy. In response to that, I collaborated with a, a Swedish company, uh, Polygen, to create a reusable mask that uses a silver uh, chloride treatment, uh, which cleans itself. So again, it's a product that is much more durable, 
self-cleansing and uh, you don't really have to care for it while the innovation is already taken care of and the virus and the cleaning. That is my approach to smartening up our wardrobe and I hope uh, more people let innovation into their wardrobes because it's uh, a way of yeah, living more sustainably in my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Super nice. Um, okay, there's one question coming in from my mom, which I have to <laughs> have to ask. <laughs> I mean, what are the chances that you're, you're able to do that? But she's asking, uh, is your tensile different from the one I buy in the shop? Because these fabrics tend to catch stains, from which I think, where does it come from? Catch stains? Yeah, so I think normally with tensile, a lot of the times it stains easily. So I think that's that's the question. So if you this but phase already says here, enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, then I have yeah count, counter question: uh, what, what type of stain? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I think I will cycle this back back to our home uh, <laughs> conversation. Okay. <laughs> Um, one question, uh, many clothes state that they are antibacterial, but do not provide any details of the substances used. So you are, of course, uh, have all the knowledge. So I think we would like to hear a little bit more uh, about that. There are a lot of uh, antibacterial treatments indeed, and not all of them are approved and uh, safe for your skin or, or breathing them in. So um, yeah, I, I highly recommend only entrusting this one Swedish company, Polygen, which uh, Fashion for Good is also, uh, uh, yeah, not collaborating with, but in contact at least, because it's, it's really one of the most, yeah, trustworthier uh, choices and I know that uh, yeah Adidas is already working with them and uh, Tommy Hilfiger for instance uh, uh, this would be the treatment that uses uh, silver salt uh, as a, as an ancient technique of uh, killing bacteria some tribes apparently even wore silver jewelry not at all for the shine or the bling of it, but just for uh, being staying clean. <laughs> so if you see silver salt, uh, silver biocide, that's that's the that's the safe options to go for. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. I think because I also saw a question: Is using silver chloride a mask a sustainable practice? But you're there's no chloride in yours, right? It, is that what you're saying? Silver chloride is is the silver liquid form. It doesn't. I don't okay. know what what uh, the person meant by chloride. It's not chlor. If that's what <laughs> if that's what you mean, it's just a form of uh, yeah, liquid silver, basically silver salts. Okay, thank you. And there's also a question: Can you spell the Swedish company, please? But I think uh, my colleague can answer to that a little later. Um, and where, where does the nylon for the overcoat come from? Uh, as in country, uh, the material uh, for the overcoats is, it's a blend of polyester and nylon. Uh, both come from uh, Korea. Cool. And uh, it will be, uh, it's recycled polyester, right? In the... Uh, in the Recover Merino line it is, but not in the raincoats. Although, yeah, okay. the, the renewed production of the, the coats yeah. will have it in uh, recycled. Uh, yes. Awesome. And I will switch over to Ro because she has a great view on the, on the product line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the, here we go, I'm trying to zoom out for you guys. So what are we seeing here? Is this the overcoat? Is this uh... Yeah, that's the overcoat, which you can show closer to the knee level. Yeah, I'll try to show this with one hand. <laughs> the, the tiny feature that um, uh, is, is about clipping the coats 
around your legs so you don't have yeah. to wear any crazy uh, suits when the rain is out you just uh, so you only you only need one jacket basically and then you have a suit so it's like yeah. two in one yeah <laughs> this is like a, a must a must have items for anyone living in the netherlands or the uk or anywhere where it rains like i love these types of things because i caught i caught caught in the rain this morning so this would have been very useful <laughs> take it away Beautifully done, hey? It's very nice. And then this is like a sort of a vest, chile, what, how do you call this? Yeah, they are blanket-like vests, which you can love also that. wear as a scarf, or uh, when I say blanket-like is, yeah, when, when you fly, <laughs> for instance, you can, if you lay down on three seats, you can uh, use it as a blanket and <laughs> a uh, as well. Really nice, very nice. I think that's it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I see more questions popping up, but I don't think we have time for that. So we will make sure that they, we will refer back to those. We will save them and make sure they're answered. Um, so thank you, Laura, for this. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon again here. Yeah. Um, so up next is Jeroen from The Fabricants. Are you live on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Cool. Yes. Awesome. So the, the digital mic is all yours now. Thanks, Gwen. Hey, good morning, guys, or afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're watching it from. Uh, we are the Fabricant. We are the first digital ever uh, digital fashion house in the world. Uh, but what does that mean? It means that we create and design uh, digital fashion, digital clothing. And that's always digital and never physical. And why do we do that? Because we want to change the, uh, the fashion industry in a more sustainable way. Uh, so we waste, in, we waste nothing but data and exploit nothing but our imagination. Uh, we only waste uh, electricity because we need that for our computers. But that's the only thing uh, we, uh, we waste. But how did, we, uh, how did the fabricant start it? The Fabricant started by Kerry Murphy, our founder, and Amber J. Slode. Uh, Kerry is, uh, has a background in visual design, and Amber J. Slode is the first ever student to graduate from a uh, all digital fashion collection from the Amphi. And here do you see the rest of our team, executive team. So, like I said, Kerry Murphy, our co founder, and Amber, our co founder, uh, Adriana, uh, our CMO also old CMO of HEMA and Nike. And because we are a technology organization, we have a very good CTO and that's Marike. Here do you see uh, a big project uh, that we did in 2019. It's called the iridescent dress. And this dress is fully uh, and only digital designed and sold online. And we uh, sold it for almost 10,000 euros. So that was a big step for us. Uh, but how does it work? Well, we work al almost the same as a normal fashion company. So here you see our pipe, pipeline. pipeline. Uh, we also start with uh, 2D patterns and then you have 3D translation, detailing, simulation, so animations. And then we put lighting and rendering on it. And if you do that, then you can get hyper realism. And sometimes it's even better than realistic, uh, real uh, garments. Another milestone we had was in 2018, the IT Hong Kong. Here we digitalized uh, their collection and uh, the consumer could only buy the uh, uh, collection digitally. And here do you see a free file drop. So every design we make, we, uh, we share for free because we are against the secrecy uh, in the uh, current fashion industry. And what do you get if you share your designs? Well, you get a lot of creativity from our community. And here, see, uh, here do you see some examples. Um, but these uh, examples are only done by 3D designers. Designers who, who know and the know-how of using a digital garment. And that's not really scalable. So how can you scale uh, and make it accessible? How can you make digital fashion accessible for everybody? Well, you need a virtual body, you need digital clothing, and you need a marketplace. So 
if we can go to the next slide in three, two, one. Yeah, there we have it. Here do you see the first ever marketplace uh, we built. We're still developing it. But on the left side, you see our co-founder, Half Naked Body of Kerry. And then you can try on digital clothing in our marketplace. You can add animations. And on, all the way on the right, you have your unique content, like Kerry was dancing there. Uh, we did already some collaboration with Fashion for Good. And here do you see a prototype of what, uh, of Lila. Uh, here do you see the first prototype of Lila. And it allows you to create your digital twin so that you can really fit and share and, um, and choose your own digital fashion clothing. And what we want is with this, uh, with this platform is to, that you can explore, curate, and create digital fashion. That, you, that we can offer you uh, the uh, creativity of digital fashion. Uh, we also did get, uh, we also got some feedback from uh, the beta that we uh, did uh, the past year, past five months. And what that said was that 61% of the respondents would like to use Lila to transform their identity. And 75% would use their virtual twin. But our number one request was really that uh, the responses want to have the ability to wear digital clothing. So with Lila, we, we want to enable that. We want to enable that creativity that you can wear this to closing, but you can also be creative with this to closing. Wear different brands at the same time. So I, I can wear a, sh a shirt from the one brand and a, and, and some, and a short from the other brand. Uh, what we also saw is that the new generation, Gen Z, really wants to uh, join the newest fashion trends but they really are in a, uh, really focused on a sustainable way. So they really want to unfuck the, uh, unfuck the, uh, the world problems without wasting anything. Uh, the slides are going very fast, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, um, through Fashion for Good, we get in touch with the Adidas Accelerator program. Uh, they helped us uh, grow our vision and to get a more uh, and better platform to, uh, to develop. Uh, and lastly, but not least, uh, you can still try Lila on digital.fashion. So I all like you to invite, I all inviting you to try uh, Lila on digital.fashion and create your digital twin. So we are the fabricants and we are uh, changing uh, humans to the next level of existence. Thank you all for listening. I hope it was clear and that I didn't get too fast. But, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, share it with me and uh, or email it, whatever you want. <laughs> Thank guys. you, Jeroen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, well, 20 seconds per slide. I <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think uh, I'm, I'm actually here. live in the ballroom, guys. We're actually trying out Lila in the, in the museum. We're here in the ballroom with, with our model, Sophie, who was doing Unspun earlier. There she goes. And we took a selfie, or sorry, a photo. She took a photo, and she's bald now. That's part of it, right? We're, we don't have hair yet, uh, you Yeah, the That's first correct. edition, unfortunately, it's, it's still bald, but we're working on yeah. it. <laughs> It's so cool though, like we're trying on different garments. Look, this is Sophie wearing a kimono type of dress jacket. Wait, it's loading. So basically we're streaming this on like a big screen here in the ballroom and then like, and then we just go back. Sorry, here we go. Look at that, how awesome is this? It's so cool. So anyone can come <laughs> and do this at the museum. Sorry, I'm super excited. I love these types of things. They're awesome, you know, I really think they're really cool. Thanks, much appreciated. <laughs> okay, so go back to the questions. I'll, I'll shut up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ro and Sophie. Um, some questions. Uh, as, there's, a, there's a question from a brand. As, as a brand, could I use Lila? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, like a counter question, how, would you, uh, how uh, do you want to use Lila? Do you want to have your digital clothes on Lila or what do you want? I think we, we cannot uh, have these answers okay. straight back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> oh, oh, I have an answer. We're, we're sort of live no, intertwined chatting together. What's the nice, it's the sell, nice? It's to sell her clothes, to sell yeah, my yeah, digital clothes. 
So right now we are in the beta phase. So we are developing uh, the platform uh, for the next couple of months. And we're hoping to go live in December or January. And then uh, and, and we're looking for our brands to collaborate with that you can upload your uh, digital garments to our platform and that you can uh, sell your garments over there. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, another good question. How does sustainability play along with digital fashion? Well, uh, like our slogan says, we waste nothing but data. So we don't have any waste in the physical world. We all, uh, everything we do is digitally. There's no uh, storage uh, on servers, that kind of stuff. I know it's yeah, yeah, yeah. No that's clue, no knowledge that's, on that. Uh, that's that uh, indeed. That's costing uh, electricity, uh, like I said. So that's uh, yeah, that's the first step. We are still looking into that if we can do it without electricity, but uh, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> And I think it's still very low, huh? All right. I think uh, we we came to an end of uh, of all of the questions and this launch. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jeroen and and all of the other uh, speakers. I think uh, it's also time for uh, for me and Ro to uh, to have a drink, <laughs> and all of you as well. So. Um, Please do come visit our museum if you're here in the Netherlands. And if, if you're not, uh, book a digital tour with one of our lovely hosts. We have super amazing uh, hosts here with different backgrounds that are, are super eager to tell you more. Uh, so cheers. <laughs> Passionforgood.com slash book a tour. That was our final. Uh, what did you say, Gwen? <laughs> Passionforgood.com slash book a tour. Oh, sure. Thank you, Jeroen. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Okay, we now have our final brand, Emma Rose. She's dialing in from New Zealand as a special extra edition. Uh, Emma, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, I'm Emma Laroca of M Rice. We make zero waste swimwear from an Italian fabric which is made with ethanol recycled nylon. Our swimwear is zero waste because of the pattern making techniques that we use. All of the pattern pieces fit together in a tessellating way so that there are no scraps of fabric sitting between them. When we have finished cutting out, we are always left with a straight line to begin working from again. Because, of our, because our garments are small, we need to work with the entire lay plan to achieve zero waste. So we are usually cutting out between four and 20 garments with each style or size we make. This lay plan here makes four Guadalupe configure rash shirts. There are leftover pieces for cutting out the neckline, but these are used as frills for another design. We currently cut out by hand, which is okay because the pattern pieces are butted up against each other. So with one movement, we're actually cutting out two pieces. This halves our cutting time. When production increases, we would love to have a laser cutting machine to cut out entire rolls of our lay planes. And we really would love to encourage larger fashion brands to start working in this way. Environmentally, it's amazing and economically, it's a game changer. Traditional, traditional pattern making methods cause 15 to 30% of the fabric to be wasted, which is money down the drain and thousands of meters of virgin fabric being burnt or going to landfill each season. A fast fashion brand might sell 3 billion articles of clothing a year. Let's say of that 3 billion, there are 10,000 t-shirts, which each take one meter of fabric to make. That's roughly 1,500 meters of unused fabric wasted, not to mention the farming, water, chemicals, and hours of labor gone into the making of the fabric. And that's only the t-shirts. My idea is that if fast fashion companies are not going to slow down, then we can at least give them a kick in the right direction. Um, zero waste lay plans are perfectly um, suited to creating fast fashion. It should be so appealing to them, really. They can make even more garments than they are now and cut costs in the right places without as much unnecessary waste and damage to our environment. Then they might have a few extra dollars to pay their production workers what they deserve. At Emrose, we can confirm that our production workers are paid the living wage because we sew everything ourselves. 
Um, this is so that we can be sure that there is zero waste during production and so that we can control the quality and help to eliminate errors. This here is Rachel. She is one of the Nigerian refugees that we were working with in Italy. Some of the boys and girls knew how to sew very well, but I offered to improve their skills and to give them a day out of their normal life of the school that they were living at in Italy. Um, so to explain our New Zealand-Italian connection, I studied fashion design at Massey University in Wellington. I'm from New Zealand. Um, and that was under the tutelage of Holly McQuillan, one of the zero waste fashion design gurus of today, although we didn't know it at the time. I decided to make swimwear when I discovered the Econil swimwear fabric while I was traveling, teaching and surfing, um, traveling and teaching surfing in South America about eight years ago. Before this discovery, I thought that sportswear couldn't be made in a sustainable way because it's designed for performance and generally made from plastic. So it was a revelation for me. Um, after traveling, I married my Italian husband, Fabio La Rocca. We had our first child and moved to Lago di Como in Italia, where I made the first collection. Um, I'm now back in New Zealand and trying to break into the market here. Um, um, it's really a dream, though. It allowed me to break into the Italian market, um, being yeah, living there. And so that's like amazing as a um, swimwear designer because you really need the two hemispheres, the markets in both hemispheres to keep busy all year round. So our styles are very simple and elegant. They're not based on trends. Um, we design new swimsuits based on customer requests or the pieces that we feel are missing in our collection. We do not make a new collection every year. We have one revolving collection, which is called Deco del Mar. Um, because the shapes were inspired by Art Deco houses. The most important aspect of our design, aside from zero waste, is function. For this reason, we design everything to be surfed in, as it's the ultimate test. I think that people who enjoy the water have more respect for it, and that some people don't respect the water because they've never been given the means to enjoy it and appreciate it. This can simply come down to having never found a swimsuit that they feel comfortable moving in without losing their dignity. Um, so the next important aspect is fit. Um, we care very much about covering up the front and less about covering the back. We've actually made this high waist bottoms with an extra wide leg frill for the growing movement of natural ladies who of course are usually confident in bearing all but sometimes need to hide their pubes from the conservative crowds. And the grandmothers are really loving this style too. We don't usually cut frills purposely, but in this case, we saw it as a feature with a function. We do add frills to the children's swimwear, but these are made of the small triangle scraps, which we are sometimes left with at the end of our, at the corners of our lakelands. This box shows all of our scraps after two years of work. Um, sometimes the width of our fabric changes from color to color. In this case, we use the thin strips left on the sides of the lakeland to attach our price tags. We also save all of our thread ends to use as cushion stuffing. We've been going for five years now, but have moved very slowly, mainly because of having children, but also so that we never fell into the trap of becoming wasteful, just because it's faster and easier. Now to clarify that we is mainly just me, but I couldn't do this without the help of the students who come for internships, the photographers, the models, and the fit models who volunteer for the good cause. So I'd like to thank them and Econo for making the amazing recycled nylon that I use. And thank you so much to Fashion for Good for um, inviting me to be a part of this show. Thank you. Thank you, Emma, that was amazing. Um, <laughs> and before we go into q and I would uh, love to actually show you a piece as this was a super super tight uh delivery uh we weren't able to show it to the press yesterday but luckily today it's um yeah it may be hard to see on the little screen but it's a it's a reversible um um button with uh with the strap so please please come and come to our space and check it out especially while it's still summer um we have some questions for you, Emma. They were pre-collected from the audience uh, when they signed up. 
Um, so one of the questions was, is your material recyclable or circular at the end of its life? So the thing with um, swimwear fabric, if it's stretchy, then it has, um, it's a mixed fiber. It has elastane in it as well. And it's very hard to then split the plastic, whether it's um, polyester or nylon from the elastane. So it's not recyclable. Um, and yeah, um, even like if we were using, yeah, there's no way of, of making it 100% um, polyester or anything. This is something that we, we um, are constantly researching. And the yeah. only way that they could really make a recyclable or circular um, stretchy swimwear fabric is if they actually changed how they um, maybe if they knitted the fabric in a different way or if they mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think that's the only way that you could do it and I and I have seen that they've um, knitted a cotton in a certain way recently where it doesn't lose its stretch if it gets wet or it um, it doesn't like mm. yeah so you know amazing happening it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why we're here for as well. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we might uh, do this again in the future with a with a recyclable material. Hopefully, hopefully. fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one more question for you um, was: Can you explain more the hurdles of differences in being able to make your pattern zero waste rather than the normal way that our patterns are cut from fabric? Um. I suppose, um, well, a really, a really good thing is that it means you can't do absolutely everything. So it makes you more creative. So um, you can't just copy other people's designs and make them. You have to like think outside the square. Actually, you have to really think inside the square. And um, it just forces you to make something really new, you know because you can't go off in all these tangents and, and get caught up with what everyone else is doing. So that's one thing that I love about working with zero waste design. And one thing that's difficult is, um, um, one thing that's difficult is that you can't, um, like usually when you're grading the pattern, so you make a size small, and then you'll make a size medium off that small and you'll just add on five millimeters to each side seam and here and there, you know, and you just go up yeah. and you make a whole graded pattern. You can't do that. I have to, yeah. um, every pattern, every lay plan is completely different between the sizes. So that's, uh. it takes a bit more time. Um, but I think it's kind of good because you, I'm um, working to the body. I'm ju not just assuming that a medium is five mils larger or one centimeter larger than a small, like their waists get higher um, and their, their legs get curvier. So I have to accommodate yeah. that. So yeah, um, so it's almost like finding a better fit between the sizes, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. It's actually, uh, yeah, I think you're, you're completely right and, and, and shopping swimwear is uh, is quite difficult and you have to show part of your body so yeah it's, we're not all the same no so thank you uh, for all of this we we're gonna wrap it up uh, okay. thanks everyone for watching um and if you find yourself in amsterdam in the next six months we would love for you to see a cut above uh in person and if not please keep an eye out on our social as we will launch uh our digital tours in our museum pretty soon as well. Thank you. Bye, Emma. Wow. <laughs>